Good afternoon and welcome back to Woodcrafter's Corner. Boy, is it good to see you again. Today's episode of the chess series is the Rook, as you can see. I've got one all carved and ready to go. On our previous episode, we did uh, the pawn, and as you can see, there is a size difference here. This is uh, 1.5 inches, by the way, whereas the pawn uh, was 1.25 inches, but we don't need to talk about the pawn anymore. This is about the Rook, and we have a blank already cut out. You can see the first episode in this uh, I should say the prequel, if you will, in the playlist, and that's where we cut out all these pieces, or at least went over the measurements. So a one and a half inch. Um, this is a piece of basswood that is one inch on all sides, and it was originally six inches, and I cut out this piece. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we know if you want your rook to look like mine, uh, then all you have to do is make a few little marks on this piece. So I took the liberty, this is the top, and as you can see, there's a circle here, the diameter of which is a little bit smaller. Obviously, it's a very rough circle, but it's a little bit smaller here than the piece of wood is. So that's going to be the top, and we'll come back to that. But for the bottom, the diameter is going to touch all four sides of this one by one by one by one piece of, of basswood. So to do that, and again, this can be very rough, all we're really doing is taking out the corners. So I, I start out, I can't make a per perfect circle. Some people can. And uh, wow, this is quite difficult to do through the camera lens, but as you can see, really the whole purpose, purpose of making this mark is just to show you that all we're really doing is taking off the corners. Now this is the base, which is wider than the top. So, and that's because we're gonna be coming in from the sides here at kind of a sloping angle. Uh, when we come to the top, which is right here, we're gonna need to do a few more a little adjustments. And to do that, again, make your circle, but make it just slightly smaller so it doesn't touch every corner. There's a little bit of a gap here. And then what I've done is put a little dot here in the center. This was pointless, don't even worry about that. What I will do, so as you can see for the rook, the top here is kind of divided into four parts and they are roughly equal, if you think of each one of these as like the corner of a square here. And obviously it's rounded, but here's how I translate that into a drawing uh, that we can reference. Again, this is just a rough idea of how we want this to end up looking, and it's better to make it a little bit smaller than you think it will need to be, rather than larger, because you can always take off wood later. So what have I done here? I've made a little kind of a plus sign, if you will, and everything inside of those little squares that we just made is going to get cut out. And that'll leave us with something very similar to what we see here. That'll just help guide us as we move on through this next steps. So I'll place that there because that is what's always on our mind as we go through this. So all we need to start with is to take out the four corners. Now since the top is smaller, we'll start with the bottom. And all we'll do is just line up the knife with that edge here. And I like to go a little outside of it just in case and then push in. I'm using this thumb to push. And since we're going with the grain, it just pops right apart. So that was easy. And the odds are very good that it's gonna be all straight. Do the same thing here. And you can see what it's doing to the top there, leaving plenty of space for us. Push in here. Now that one came out at a little bit of an angle, so I might go up here and try that again. That's better. Pretty rough, but that's okay. We're just getting out the main shape. Do the same thing here. All right, so here's what we're left with, kind of a squared circle, if you will. Let's get rid of these hideous pieces of debris, and then we'll come back. So don't, don't spend too much time on this section because all of this is going to be changed as we go, but I'm just going to smooth out some of these. By the way, if you want to know what knife I'm using, I am using the Flex Cut Detail Knife, which came in a set of three. Shameless plug for the review I did of it. It's a really good knife. It holds its edge really well So I tend to use it for videos because I don't have to stop and strop it every now and then 
at least on a shorter format like these. All right, so here's what we've got. Now, if we compare to the one that's already done, you can see that there are a few kind of uh, little flourishes that are present on this rook. So we need to figure out how we're going to translate that to this blank piece right here. So I'll just come over and make a mark, maybe two, just where I think it should be. And we'll go ahead and do one here, even though we're gonna be taking off a lot of that anyway. So this probably won't be all that useful, but down here, pretty much this bottom one is the most useful. So let's straighten that out a little bit. What I like about these guidelines, especially when you're whittling, is that it does not have to be perfect. There's really not much that you can mess up here. So what I will do is start to make a mark with my knife on a single point like that. Just pressed it in a little bit. And then I'm gonna go all the way around and try to meet at the other side. So it's just a light press. All I'm trying to do is make a mark here. I'm not really trying to go very deep because I might need to adjust this if I don't end up meeting it perfectly on the other side. Which you can see I came down a little low. So let's try it again. This is just my trial and error method. And there we go, that's perfect, as far as I'm concerned. So I'll just go around again to make that deeper. And if you want, you could do this with the pencil instead and save yourself the trouble of making multiple runs around with the knife. But I don't know, I find this method works for me pretty well. And now that I've pushed in fairly deep, or at least deep enough, I can go ahead and take out a few chunks just to kind of set it apart for my eyeballs to see. Just very shallow, meeting, them, meeting the line I created at like a, a stop cut, which is exactly what this is. Whoops, so I made that little mistake, but that's totally fine because that's gonna go anyway. All of this is kind of like, kind of like you're writing an essay. This is the rough draft. Sorry to compare whittling to writing uh, an essay. That just where, that's just where my mind went, all right? So that's literally all we needed to do was just make that mark. And now that we've done it, it's time to move on. So what I'm gonna do next is start at this line and I'm gonna take out a little bit more all the way around. And this time I am gonna be a little more careful just because I don't wanna take off too much. My whole goal here is literally just to kind of shape it up like a cylinder a little bit better. And even though we don't wanna take off too much, the more I take off now within the kind of guide that I want, the easier it's gonna be for our next step when we start to make the top. So I'm gonna lose my marks here, but that's totally fine. Now when you do this, especially if you start down here like I did, um, you tend to kind of come up like this at the end, and that leaves the top a little bit wider than the middle, just slightly. But I'm gonna go in and using my measurements up here, very crude, and we're just keeping to this rough outline here. Not going in too deep, but just enough that it'll make, us, make it a little bit easier on us a little bit later. All right, so that is good for now. Now again, using this as a reference point, I think what I'll do is go ahead and make this mark here. Because now that we have this one, uh, everything from this line up is narrower. In fact, anything from the bottom is narrower. So we wanna be careful not to take out too much to uh, leave a little room for error for up here. So all I'm gonna do is make a mark here of course, when you do yours, you're not going to have the luxury of having one already made, at least not for your first one. So just eyeball this. It's really, oh, that's all I did. I haven't, I've never measured this area here. All I know is I've made this maybe one sixth or one eighth, something like that of this area here. And then making this about the top, mm, about the top third, maybe the top fourth, just eyeball it. And so that's where I want it to be. If you make this too low, no problem, you can always take out more. Um, you just don't wanna make it too high. So err on the side of caution, make this a little bit lower if you want, so it takes up a full third. Now we're gonna do the exact same process we did 
at the beginning. So I'll make a mark here, pressing in. And again, if you want to err on the side of caution, make it a little lower than you think. So that's what we've got. Now this cut is a, quite a bit deeper than the one I made down at the bottom. And plus, since we know we want to take out more, I'm sweeping up from lower here. But don't do too much. This is about the most I'd want to do. When you're making your cuts here, keep your knife straighter instead of coming in like this, because that'll inevitably take out more than you want. And especially because we're going around in a circle, almost, we want to make sure to keep the, the cuts consistent. The more consistent they are, the less likely it'll be that the cylinder shape will be off center. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So it's going to be hard to tell because this hasn't been touched very much. But if we look at this from the top or the bottom, the goal is not to take out more on this side than on this side because otherwise the cylinder will appear like it's leaning. And so if you take off a little at a time, it's super easy to fix if that starts to happen. And it's also less likely to happen in the first place. But if you start taking out big chunks, then you might uh, end up in trouble. But maybe you just have an interesting leaning rook, you know, that might be a style unto itself. So that's about as much as I can take out without making this line deeper, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so we've made a pretty good lip here. You can kind of see that all the way around. Keeping it relatively even, you can see I could go a little bit deeper there. So that's what I did. So that's good enough for now. All of this can change, but we want to make sure not to abandon this, especially because we don't want to start taking off too much down here where we want some of these details to be. So let's go ahead and make this line a little bit deeper now. Pushing pretty hard because the deeper it is on this pass, the less often you'll have to do it. One important thing to note especially when you're down in this section so close to the bottom, is that an accidental cut from the bottom will take off probably quite a bit more than you intend because we're working with the grain here. So as you're going around doing what we're about to do, I'm going to use mostly the tip of the knife and I'm going to be only starting from about halfway down. I'm not going to start from way down here because it's going to be way too easy to make a mistake. So watch what I do here. being just really delicate because the closer you are to the end of the grain, the easier it is to take big chunks out by accident. So I'm not really leaving much room for error here. So that gives us a good idea so we've got our probably two most important marks already made here. The next step is going to be to make this next mark. Now again, I just eyeball this because it really doesn't matter too much where you put this. But anyway, I guess if you want to make it look just like mine, I'm going to I'm going to put it a little bit higher maybe. So there's my mark. And all I'm going to do using this bottom one as a guide because even if that one's not perfectly level, at least they'll match. So that's that's fine. It's not meeting up perfectly, but this is going to be a little bit narrower, so that's all right. We're going to take that off. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark deeper. All right, so I went around and deepened these lines, each one, just like we did before. And uh, honestly, the more you do this, it can make it a little bit easier as we go. So not a bad thing to do if you want. The next step for me is going to be to make this a little bit slantier, if you will. And that's exactly the way this one looks. So how do we do that? Well, before where we started about halfway down, we're going to start a little bit further down this time. But again, I'm going to be using very controlled movements like this, using this thumb to push and this hand is only here to hold the knife. I'm not pushing with it at all. So you'll see what I mean. 
giving it a little leverage with my pinky over here, but that's it. It's one nice thing about the shape of these flex cut knives, although the beaver crafts are the same shape, and that is simply this hook makes it pretty easy. But anyway, I'm just going around making this deeper, and I'm starting a little bit further down than I did before, but taking great care not to start past the edge. And let's go ahead and move on to the top. So we know where we want this ring to be. So all we need to do, well, why don't I just show you? I don't need to just sit here and describe it all day. Now, again, we want to take great care to start at the middle point here and make these types of cuts right here. Once we're done making these, this round of cuts, we're going to need to flip it over and cut the same way from the other side. And that will make it more of that rounded shape. Okay, that's, that's round one. Flip it over. And we're going to do the same thing here. But because we've already taken out a big chunk here, we don't really have a stop cut to go against. So you do have to be kind of controlled here. Again, using this thumb as a pivot point. That's all we're doing. But I am making just the ever so slightest cuts here. So as you can see, that started to give it this kind of rounded out appearance. And that's exactly what we wanted. Once again, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing. So we have the base layer here, the ring that we've been working on, and then this needs to look like that. So all we're gonna do is come around and do this exact same thing on this line, like this. Okay, and you can see how that's starting to take shape. It is looking good. Now, when it comes down to the top, as you can see, the top here is slanted inward. It's not perfectly straight up and down like this one is. I've already made this line relatively deep, but we need to take out a little bit more here so we can at least get an idea of what we're working with here. So we've made this kind of rough outline of this section here. So we want to make sure not to go below that. We'll start about here. And that'll give it another kind of layer of texture, if you will, or design. But we're going to finalize all that. But we can start to take out a little bit more at once now, since we have an idea of where everything is. We don't have to worry about taking off maybe too much. And we do want to take off a little bit more than you would think, because this is going to be slanted. This needs to be quite a ways in to accommodate that. So I need to make this deeper now. And then I'll go around again, taking off quite a bit at this point. So as you can see, that is quite a bit deeper, but I think that's starting to be about where we want it. The next step for me is to make that angled kind of slope on this upper part here. So to do that, this time we will start pretty near the top here, or at least what is now the bottom, and work our way down. But again, we're taking that angle very slight. As you can see, my knife is barely angled at all. It's definitely not like this, it's not like this. All I'm trying to do is take off the slightest amount at a time and a little bit more towards the, the, uh, the lip here. But again, we have to be very careful. Hopefully you can see that. If I were to start coming in at an angle like this, then that's going to just, this whole section could break off really easily. So that's why we have to be slow and controlled and definitely not taking off more than we intend to do.
Okay, and you can start to see what we're getting here, but it is it is slow, but that's okay. Okay, I think that'll do for now. Now we've already made a few marks on the top, so we have an idea of what we're taking out here, but let's just review this and make sure it looks okay. I'm gonna make these in a little bit further. Before we do any of this cutting though, to make these notches, the first thing is going to be to draw a secondary circle on the inside. And what I like to do is just go around the where these uh, four corners are. This isn't really necessary per se, we're not really making another circle, but it helps me keep this outer circle, what it is now, uh, separate because these are gonna end up being obviously these things. <laughs> uh, I'm really good with my words, so. Now to do this, obviously, we're gonna need to hollow some of this out up here. So how do we do that? Well, you can use your knife, and to do that, all you'll do is come in into this inner circle, and you coming at, in at an angle, just push your way around. But you do have to be extremely careful, and you can do it like this too, just making pushing movements all the way around. And then as you're going, make these kind of wide V cuts. And it doesn't have to be pretty, you just have to get in there and make these. And then once you have a kind of a point, you can make these marks around here. Now the problem with doing it this way, although it's certainly doable, is that you have to be extremely careful not to put, it, it's kind of tough to work up here uh, against the grain right at the ends. So you have to be careful not to start pushing too hard, although it's tempting because it's, it's a little bit difficult because it's gonna be so easy for you to slip, push too hard and just slip, um, and risk cutting yourself even with gloves on, but also risk taking out a big chunk that you didn't intend. If I take out a chunk here towards the edge, then unfortunately, I'll pretty much have to either start over or start making a different chess piece <laughs> altogether. So A, you have to be careful to just use the tip here and to move around in extremely controlled movements but you can definitely do it, it'll just take a little bit of time. But what I'm gonna use is the handy dandy flex cut carbon jack. Now this has made a few appearances in my videos before, it's just handy to have around. Um, now you don't necessarily need to go out and buy one of these for this project, but it is nice to have this angled gouge that they use uh, oftentimes for carving, for carving spoons. It also has a straight gouge here, which will come in handy here in a minute. Now you can use any gouge really. For example, this one, which is a beaver craft. I'll leave a link in the description, but for this, particular project this gouge is just a little bit too big so I'm not going to be using that uh, but if you have a smaller one or if you uh, just have something lying around that'll work this is a great way to do it so that's what I'm going to do so I'm just going to go around and make these cuts here nothing fancy just taking out material and it, it's so much easier this inner circle just gives me an idea of how to keep it even around the edges All right, so you can see where we're going with that. We're just making a little concave surface and just looking at it occasionally to see if it's still even. All right, and that's about as deep as I wanna go for now. We can always come back and do a little bit more. What I do want is to take out a little bit more around the edges, but using my knife for a little more control. Now, um, what you'll notice here is I tend to slide the knife when we're working the grain in this manner. And that's because it allows more control. Now I'm not making this crater any deeper at the moment. I'm only making it wider because, well, you'll see. So 
now that we have this um, kind of a, like an outer wall, if you will, we can go ahead and start to take out these chunks. So to do that, we've already made our lines here for what we want to take out. So let's just begin. Um, start really small, and what we're going to do is make some V cuts. So here we have a corner, here we have a, a corner. All we want to do is make a single line in the middle of those two with our knife. Now please be careful because if you push too hard here, it's going to be way too easy to just keep on pushing and it'll wreck the whole thing. So again, using my thumb here as support, I'm going to just rock back and forth. It's so easy. I'm barely pressing because we're working in between grains right now. So I've made a small line there. Now the hard part is going to be going against the grain, which is what we're doing right here, but still being very careful and controlled. So you can see I made a very shallow, very shallow V cut, and there's not much more to it except to go over it and do it again. It is easier to slide when you're working against the grain like that. So there's, there's the start. All right, there's where we are so far. Now that we just have an idea, we want to take out a little bit more around the inside because uh, that's gonna be a lot harder to do. It's kind of like this balance you have to do. You have to watch because you can't take out too much from the center if the edges here have these deep cuts in them because then they're going to be unsupported. And I know I'm not doing a great job of explaining what I mean, but I think you get the idea. So we're starting to get there, and I think that'll be enough for now because we do want to make these a little more sloped as we go, but you'll see what I mean by that. And now we're going to start moving these. Instead of pushing the knife straight down and straight down with each V cut, we're going to start moving the knife in kind of this orientation so that we start to take out a little bit more along the outside than the inside. Like that. And we're going to do the same orientation like this. So see what we got there? We'll do the same thing here. And as you push down, try to keep the tip of the knife aligned with the middle right here. That'll make sure that it all comes out aesthetically pleasing. And to compare, here's where we're at. So that's about as deep as we want them, but we might want them a little bit wider. And this one a All right, that is looking pretty good. Now we still need to make that hole just a little bit wider or let's take off a little bit more on the outside here. And we're just continuing to make that slope, but I do want to take off a little bit more around the outside edges here. So I'm going to even come in at the top and just make the slightest cuts and then start to work my way inwards here, just like that. 
it's better to narrow your way from the outside in because it's too easy to break these off as you're pushing towards the outside. All right, so here's what we're left with. All right, so at this point, let's move on to cleaning up this area here. So the first thing will be to get this bottom part to where we want it. So let's go around and make our cut that we're so used to now. And then we just need to slope it inwards. I'm going at a slightly steeper angle this time. So take a few minutes every now and then, well probably not a few minutes, but a couple of seconds to just make sure that it's going the way you want it to here. Alright, that's starting to come together now. So let's move on to the next step, and that is to essentially do the same thing above this ring. So I'm going to make this cut deeper and make it a little easier myself flip it around. Now start to be careful not to put too much pressure on these castles as you're um, whittling here, so put more pressure on the middle section. Just something to keep in mind. You don't want to break those off. So now let's go ahead and start from the bottom and work our way down. Uh, being very careful because we are going to be taking off uh, a bunch of what we've done here so far, but we don't want to take off too much. So as we go through it, just be careful not to push too far up from t starting up here. And again, we're just going to start out and then work our way inward in slow, controlled knife cuts. The best kind of cut. So we're kind of taking off that rounded section, but that's fine. That's looking good. Let's deepen this cut one more time, at least for now. Here's what we're going to do. Little cuts like that. All the way around. It is a stop cut, but it's a little bit deeper just coming at an angle. Alright, so that's giving you an idea of how it's going to look. But at this point, this ring, I don't know what you want to call that, but it is too big, so we need to come around, and I'm just going to start taking some off. And if your knife allows, you can come all the way around like that, or if you don't, if your knife's a little bit bigger and you don't have as much room to work, just do this. There, that didn't take too long, and that's what we're looking at. So let's make this deeper. And now we're going to do the same thing from the other side. Starting from about the midpoint of that ring. Like that. And then we're going to flip it over and then do the exact same thing.
So you can see where we're coming in here. It's still a little bigger than the other one, but that's all right. We can adjust that if we need to. All right, and in fact, I apologize, but uh, my camera kind of <laughs> messed up there. So what I did was I moved, so here's the cut we had made. This, you can see two now, but this upper one is the one we had made. And then all I did was move down because I thought that this ring was a little too big. So all I did was make another cut just along the same parallel way and uh, just made it into the ring. So that ended up making it smaller. So as you can see, we have this chunk here. And now all I have to do, since we still have some to take out here, is come down to this new one that I made and use that as the new stopping point. Now that it's a little bit thinner, it's a little bit easier to notice. I'm going to start it towards the middle and then move towards that stop cut all the way around. And hopefully you can see a little bit better from this angle. Very good. Now let's do the same thing over here, just making it a little bit steeper and a little cleaner. Now it's at this point, if you have any changes you wanna to make to the base down here, we need to go ahead and make them because we're about to finish up with this bottom section altogether. All right, now what we wanna do, since we are pretty much done with that bottom section, is that we want to take this secondary line that I had made and we want to uh, smooth it out completely. So the next step is to make this, <laughs> yet again, a little bit deeper. And this is going to end up matching the bottom that we've done already. Next, we just need to, from whatever point we chose to make those marks that we just made, we need to go the opposite direction now. So we're gonna make this upper, what I would call the neck, thinner for one thing. So I'm gonna take off just a little bit more around here. And this step may or may not be necessary for you if you took off more in the one of the previous steps that we did then this may already be good enough. But we want it roughly even at this point. The reason we left this so bottom heavy to leave and start working on the upper part is because of this part right here. So we're taking this off, but now we know how much we want to remain because we're pretty much done with the bottom half. Pretty much, we'll come back for one more thing. But otherwise, now that it's roughly even like this, let's again choose that same area so you can see the marks that we made. And then we're going to do a kind of a swooping move like this, like a J. It's easier if you use the very tip of the knife up here. 
And so we're going to start at an angle like this, and then we're going to move to an angle like this. It's also important that your um, cut up here is deep because we're going to be using that as our stopping point, our stop cut. So here's what it looks like. Now, the first one that you do, you're not going in very deep and then going up because it's really hard to maneuver like that anyway. Again, just like we have with everything, we're starting small. And so that swooping motion, that J motion, is not very big. If you were to push in too far like this and then try to move it, well, you wouldn't be able to really. Plus, you'd risk just snapping off a bunch. But you can see the kind of effect that this does here at the bottom. It gives it just a little something a little more interesting in my opinion. I'm going to make this deeper now. You can also go around and look at your surface here underneath. And if it's like a little deeper on one side or the other, just go back and take off a little more. But the whole idea here is little changes add up to big ones. And the little ones are easy to fix should something go wrong. You can also choose to make these J cuts a little bit deeper down here if you really like that look, which I do. And that is just about where we want it. So now, I mentioned earlier that we'd come back to this thing. You can leave it like this, that's totally fine. I want it to be a little bit smaller around the outside diameter, so I'm going to take off a little bit around here, but this is completely optional. At this point, yours might be exactly the way you want it to look. I'm only doing this for my own purposes, so. There we go. That's what I was kind of going for there. So now all we have to do is finish up the head. So what we did earlier is obviously we hollowed this out and it's pretty much done up there. The one thing I like to do is obviously the tops here are still flat. We haven't really touched those. They still got the marker on them. But uh, what I'll do is come through the top and just take off an angle here. And that kind of gives it an illusion hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here, that it's thinner than it really is. But it's not really necessary, but it does, it just makes the, the ends of these castles a little bit narrower. So just be careful here. And if yours are already narrow, if you already took out a bunch, then don't worry about it. This step is pretty optional but it can give it that little extra something. And in this case, it also helps take off some of that marker. You can also do the same thing from the outside, kind of like this. Very shallow cuts though, be very careful here. Since we are working with the grain, things just tend to come apart really easily. At this point, pretty much everything else we're gonna do is purely personal preference because the main body of everything is done already. So that's how that ends up looking. And I just, I, I just like it. Now at this point, you can leave it with this kind of squared off, I guess you could say, shape here, or you could come around and give it a bit of an angle around this lip. And to do that, you just line up your knife here 
And this is kind of something you want to be very careful with because it's easy to make it look really uneven, but this the whole thing with these is that that's kind of the style. You don't really have to worry about making everything perfect because they're kind of like this unfinished craft style in a good way. And so for me, I don't mind it. But as you can see, that just gives it a slightly different look. So there are our rooks. We are all done. Of course, you can make any changes that you want, but for what I've been doing, these are pretty much it. So at least I've got one side done. And so I'm going to set those aside and say thanks so much for watching. If uh, you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me out with the algorithm and everything. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.